That's what is happening in the distal convoluted tubule. At the beginning of the distal convoluted tubule, around 5% of sodium chloride is actually transported. Parath hormone, under the influence of parath hormone, if any traces of calcium is present, it is taken back into body. And when you come to the second half of distal convoluted tubule, we have got two different types of cells, the principal cells and intercalated cells. Principal cells have got receptor for ADH, antidiuretic hormone and aldosterone. Antidiuretic hormone, diuresis means dilute urine. Antidiuretic hormone means it prevents diuresis, it prevents dilute urine formation. That means when ADH is produced, water is reabsorbed. As much water has to be taken by, it depends upon our body requirements, how much of water that is taken in this, this area, I mean distal convoluted tubule collecting duct, that depends upon our body requirements. So this is dependent on the hormones. Here it is obligate water transport, it depends upon the sodium chloride present outside. But here it is controlled by hormones, it is regulated. Aldosterone, it is a hormone produced from adrenal cortex. It also has what it influences the principal cells. Principal cells will absorb sodium and secrete potassium. In the same area, we also have intercalated cells. They are simple cubicle cells with brush border. Now, intercalated cells, they push out bicarb. They they push out. H plus ions and they absorb bicarbonate ions. For every one H plus ion pushed out, it will absorb one bicarbonate. Here the cells are specialized for that. And in this area, ammonium is also being secreted like as you see in case of proximal convulsions. Now in the collecting duct, in the collecting duct in this area also, we have got the same principal cells and intercalated cells, I mean in the collecting duct. And we have got the same receptors, receptors for ADH, some more water is absorbed. And so in the collecting duct, under the influence of antidiuretic hormone, the principal cells absorb water. Under the influence of aldosterone hormone, Sodium absorption occurs. Same like here, principal cells absorb sodium. Potassium ions, H plus ions, they are actively secreted. Wherever I say secretion, it is an active process. By spending some energy, so these substances are actually secreted. So this is secretion. Now you can also see when the fluid is passing down the collecting duct. You can see a small quantity of urea. A small amount of urea, when the, when the urine is passing through this, and the, when the urine is passing through the collecting duct, half of the urea will actually pa passively, it, it comes outside, passively comes outside by diffusion. Out of 46.8 grams of urea which is present inside the duct which is being filtered outside, half of that 23 and half grams, around 23 grams of urea, it is half of that is passively diffusing outside. So this is by diffusion. So a small quantity diffuses outside. But much of the urea is still there inside the collecting duct. 
So after all these things have happened, lot of water is taken out, sodium taken out and potassium added and some other substance like calcium are taken. So concentration by the time again, by the time it has reached the lower part of the collecting duct, uh, duct of Bellini, it has again become isotonic to medullary fluid. We know the concentration in medullary fluid there is 1200 milliosmolals per liter. So it has become equal to concentration of medullary fluids. But when compared to blood plasma, it is several times higher. The blood plasma's concentration is 300 milliosmolals per liter. The urine formed here is 1200 milliosmolals. So it is four times the original concentration of our blood plasma. So the final urine form, this is the final urine form. Its concentration is four times higher when compared to our blood plasma. But it is equal in concentration to medullary fluid.